Always the voice of spirit cards behind the camera there, or his phone. Well, you, we are getting a camera, aren't we? Are we searching cameras? Yep. We'll be pretty high tech. We'll be back like the old days. This is going to be one of these big ones you got to do one of those with. Uh, and the tripod. Got a lot of complaints about your being wobbly. Yeah. But like this. Yeah. It could be me too, but. Yeah. So we're back in the booth. Uh, we were talking about paint yesterday. We were talking about getting it ready for paint, getting it to primer. And it probably, if you watch yesterday's show, it don't look a whole lot different, but it's got about, oh, it's about 11 o'clock now. It's got a, a few hours of sanding, quite a few hours of sanding. Uh, you can kind of see it's slick. It's 600 slick. Uh, I'm just going to do a lot of talking. We're not going to have a lot of props and visuals, but first off, this is not what you want to do. My hands might be dirty, they might be greasy, I was not working here. So, you don't want to contaminate it at all. So, we're going to say this is all sanded, ready to go, 600. Time to put the color on it. But before we put the color on it, you can see kind of this white areas where we sanded through a little bit. We don't need to have any more primer on it. What we're going to do next is put a sealer. And uh, the sealer will make it all one color. A good base and the sealer will sand the 600 or seal the 600 sanding scratches and get it ready for paint. And it'll give you one last time to look at it. Now, when that sealer goes on, that should be as slick as your paint is going to be. So it, it goes down pretty slick. Wet sanded. Now come down to dust. We don't want no dust. Blow yourself off really well. I mean, we'll wear a, a paint suit when we come in here so that that's going to keep it from whatever dust is on your body. Uh, you can wear gloves or not, but make sure your hands are clean and not got grease on it. If you touch it, like I said, you could leave a fingerprint. Uh, you don't want any, any kind of waxes on here, any kind of uh, thing that might cause fish eyes or a, a problem in your paint. Um, so we're all ready. We'll take some wax and grease remover with a little bit of water, wipe the whole thing down again and look at it. Wet the floor. Right now we want to make this a dust-free environment. If everything is wet, we'll change out the filters. Everything will be clean. Clean as we can possibly get it, because you can always wet sand that, a little chunk of dust out, but if you don't have to wet sand it out, you're, you're way ahead. So now I've got it wiped down with Pre-Cleano or a wax and grease remover. That's a pre clean the brand. Now I take a tack rag. What a tack rag is, it's a rag with a little bit of wax on it. Uh, it's just a little tacky, but it's not, and you don't wipe it hard. You don't want to wipe a smudge into it, but you can wipe the whole thing off. You do that just before you paint. So any dust that may have settled down on there, you can wipe down first. If you can see in here, are we going to lose, lose it if we come in here? We got some danger zones here. We didn't cut the holes in the dash because it's easier to buff without the holes and that's just a place for the air not to flow, flow correctly and a place for dust to come out. We've got our master seal, or our battery box cut but we'll mask all this off. In here this is a good place for dust to blow out of. So we need to make sure that's there inside of these door uh, where the hinges are. That's another place. Dust could be in there. Once you start spraying, I mean you don't want dust to come out and you want your airflow and your pattern to be be consistent and overlap uh, so your colors going on right every time you got to move around here I mean you can technique will help you do it but I mean it's years of practice to get the technique down left hand to go around I mean I'm, I can't see anymore but I can probably paint as good blindfolded as, as someone with no technique at all um, so we're here we're ready Again, in Spirit, we always use a base coat, clear coat. Activated primers, activated sealer. Now, the, the color itself is not activated. Uh, and then you can reduce it, follow the instructions. I'm even going to say numbers, but follow the instructions for the particular paint that you're using. Uh, again, yesterday I, I said if you can get a P sheet for every uh, product that you're using, the P sheet is the product sheet. Uh, just if you buy paint materials from a, a company, they should be able to give you the product sheet. Just ask to say, can I have a pea sheet? Um, it used to be, I don't see it so much anymore, but all the, all the paints had on it, you know, for, for professional use only, and 
they didn't give you the mixing ratios or anything on the cans or anything. So uh, when you're dealing with a, an activated product, you're either um, two to one or four to one to one, or so you've got reducer, you've got activator, and you've got your product, your, whether it be the paint or the clear. So I'm getting ready. Everything's good. I got my paint. I'm mixed. I got my ratio right. I need to make sure I've got enough mills. I got enough color on it so the color is consistent. My first coat that goes on is going to be light. The second coat will be a little darker. The third coat will be a little darker. You want it to be covered. Now, if you're doing a tri coat, you're going to have to say, "All right, I'm going to do three coats of the of the middle coat, which would be you'll have your base color, which would be a silver or gold or whatever it is, blue." And you have a, a transparent um, pearl type color that goes over that. In a, in a true candy, um, a lot of technique to painting a true candy. If I, if I hit this dash three times, but then I hit this area of it four times, and then I overlap over the top of it, I'm going to see stripes or I'm going to see a dark area here or a darker area the more I put paint on. So just be very aware of that, especially in a tri coat. Uh, solid colors, just get it covered. And even on the, uh, the metallics, you can see through it a little bit, but the, the thing is, get it colored. Your paint supplier may have a, uh, uh, I, I guess it'd be a, I think, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's just a little panel that you can paint for tinting. Half the panel's white and half the panel's black and you just spray that panel until you can't see the black and the white, until you see only the color. If you get a test panel like that, you can, you can spray. Um, occasionally somebody will do this, which fires me up more than anything. Um, the overspray happens on the walls, you can't help that. But your gun should have a pattern pretty much like this, if you can see that. Here, wait, I got a pencil. Here, we're going to look at this. Your gun pattern should look like that. If it looks like this, that's too much air. And if it looks too rounded, not enough. So you want your pattern to look like that. Um, you can put a piece of tape on the wall, or uh, not tape, but a piece of masking paper on the wall, and you can spray on the wall with that and see what the pattern is on your gun. You want to make sure the pattern on your gun is right before you even start painting. Um, again, with experience, you can almost just pull the trigger and see what the pattern's looking like. But the pattern has got to be that, that nice, long, oval shape. So now you got to paint your gun, and I would just highly, highly, highly recommend it. There's still a lot of the old uh, siphon-fed guns around there, Bink 7. Years and years and years, if any of you guys have been around for a while, you know, I mean, it still even would make a good primer gun, I guess. Pink 7 was all over the place. Develvis made some good guns. Now, get you an um, HVLP, high volume, low pressure. High volume, low pressure. It's a top, the, the cup's on top. I'm going to grab one right quick. So do we use a water base or an acrylic base? Uh, we're in Arkansas. <laughs> California, you may have to use a water base and it may be required and you may not be able to buy anything else, but um, the technology is okay, but the main reason for the technology right now is it's EPA driven, it's not quality driven. So if, if I have a choice and don't have to use um, a water base, I, I would choose um, Again, we use DPG, uh, uh, their product line, and, and we don't use water base. Okay, so I got two guns. Um, there's a different tip size. You want to use a bigger tip size for your clear and a smaller tip size for your, for your paint. So the tip, we clean the gun. Just make sure your tip is clean, and we just keep it clean like that. But the bigger tip, for your clear and a smaller tip for your paint. If you don't have uh, two different guns for each one for the different particular job, don't fret it, you can make it work. 
it just we this is what we do for, for our living, so we, we have the best equipment we can possibly get. You can get guns that go from five, six, seven hundred dollars, uh, SADA and, and guns like that, or you can get some cheaper reproduction guns, which um, especially if it's a new gun, even if it's an aftermarket reproduction, they shoot really well. Um, the main thing when they wear out, you can't rebuild them, and it's it's just not a gun that you would want to use every day, you know, for the next 15 years or whatever. So you got your gun, HVLP. Um, we have a desk and dryer on our on our uh, air. That's a. They're not real cheap, but we've got a desk and dryer there. We got a dryer um, before it even gets here. You don't want to have water in your. Uh, in your airline going into the paint, it'll it'll cause a, a problem in your paint finish as it tries to dry out of there. It, it'll just trap that water in there and it'll cause a bubble at some point. Um, there's even little screw-on things that can go on your looks like a little bulb. It can go on down here. It's a dryer that you can put on there. There's different ways. Uh, sometimes you just may not have a problem with your with water. Uh, what it does, it condenses. So you got your compressor runs hot. And as it cools down in the line, that's what creates the water. Um, so we got as, as dry air as we can possibly get. We got our guns adjusted right. We got <coughs> the right mixture. We got enough thinner on there to reducer in in, uh, in the case of what we use to call it producer. Now my percentage may be off a little bit, but it's not going to be off a whole lot. I believe 80 percent. The only reason for that reducer in the paint is to get the paint from the tip of the gun to the car. You don't want your gun, keep it 8 to 10 inches away from the car as a pattern. So again, I'm, I'm going to be here, that's about 8 to 10 inches. What's going to happen, 80% of that reducer when we talk about VOCs, uh, it's going to evaporate and it's going to go into the air before that paint even hits the car. The only purpose of that reducer is to get it out of your gun onto the car. So we're going to go, and I like to follow a pattern if I'm going to come across here, I come across, go up and around, follow my pattern, come across, come across, just whatever pattern you pick, do it the same every time, go around, go around. You want to overlap about 50%. So I'm going to I'm going to come across the pattern about this wide. I'm going to come across here. I'm going to come across here. I'm going to come across here. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on the paint. Uh, if you're using a, like a silver or a real light metallic blue, uh, you'll have a tendency for it to want to stripe a little bit. Uh, a lot of times, if you're actually doing production in a in a body shop, and you, you find that it's really hard to to match a color. I've just turned my tip. If the tip is this way, you can see my pattern is going to be like that. If I turn my tip like this, my pattern is going to be like this. But a lot of times the robots in the factory will paint the car like this. So it'll just go down the side of the car. And that is, that's not a technique you see somebody use very often. But if you're having just an extreme uh, hard time painting a, uh, like a repair and can't get it to match, uh, a lot of times there'll be alternative colors, depend on the day, depend on you know where the, the color was in the in the system. If they just flush the system and still get a little bit of the other color in it, um, there's a face and there's a flop. I can look at it this way. It's going to have one uh, one color. I can look at it this way. I, I can see the angle. There's a metallic in it, and it depends how that metallic lays. Uh, that's why when I say you do it like this, you do it like this, it makes the metallic lay a little different way. And uh, the main thing, I'm putting my color on, I don't want streaks, and I want to cover it. So you don't want those stripes here, you don't want it lighter and darker in different areas, and you want to make sure it's color, covered. If you got a problem, if you got a well, I hope you're not getting to run in your, in your color because it drives faster. If you're getting to run in your color, 
be really, really careful when it comes to clear, because clear drives slower and it's a lot easier to get a running clear. But it's not the end of the world. Let it dry. You can go wet sand it. Now you're, since it's fresh paint, and every, every paint's going to have a different window. Now when I say a window, uh, you may have a 24 hour window where it's the best time to buff it. You want to wet sand it and get it buffed within 24 hours. You may have a window of, say, 48 hours. If I put a sealer on here, certain sealers are, different ones are a little different. But I may be able to put a sealer on here and I have, a, say, a 24 hour window where I don't have to sand it again. I can just come back and tack it off and paint it again. Um, I may have a repair window. Uh, you may have a, a 24, 48 hour repair window where if you've got a real problem, you can sand it off and repair it within that time. Or you may have to wait, if you don't get it in the 24 hours, you may have to wait you know, several days for it to harden good enough to be able to, to go ahead and go back on top of it. So I'm giving a lot of information now. I'm hopefully it's helpful. Uh, you can pick a few things out of here. I have my color on. I'm happy. I'm good. Now comes clear. And uh, there's a lot to technique. I mean, some people are hosers. They just love to just pile it on and pile it on, and they can do that. And you can do it in a few less coats, um, three coats. Now, if I'm misting it more and I'm going a little quicker, I, it'll take more coats. So I, I would say a minimum three coats, four coats of clear. Um, at some point, you're just putting more material on than you really need. Before we get to the clear, if you had a little problem, you can wet sand it out in your color. You can dust that area in. Stand back. You got you got to let it flash in between coats. Again, look at your product. Um, while you're painting, maybe a 15 minute flash between, put the paint on, let it dry for 15 minutes, do it again. Your clear is probably going to be a little longer. So you want to put your first coat of clear on. And you're really trying to get this as slick as you can. And the best way I found to see how well I'm doing as far as orange peel, if I'm, I just, when I look at a car, and if I'm looking at your car at a car show or whatever, I'm just walking by and I'm watching the light. If the light is giving me a good straight reflection, I know your car is straight. If I'm seeing a good sheen, you know, I'm just reflecting it off the lights in the booth here. So that's, that's how I look at the car. I'm just looking reflective off the lights. And I'll even move my head to the point, if I'm painting here, I'm going to move my head and watch the lights so that I can see the reflection come around. You want your first one to be as, as best you can, put it as thick as you can without getting a run, and you don't want orange peel. The second one, after that tack's pretty good, you just go over a normal, normal coat. And the third and fourth one, you can kind of reduce it a little bit and kind of mist it on a little bit more. That'll help, it'd be a finer mist of paint, and that'll help maybe get rid of some of the orange peel if you do have some. Uh, again, equipment makes a big difference. There's dozens and dozens of different styles, even within the same uh, product manufacturer. A style to clear, a European style to clear, this kind of clear. So, um, if, especially if you're a first time guy, get somebody else's opinion. You may talk to three painters and they may each like a different clear, but you know, it, at least it gives you something to start with somewhere. So, this is uh, whose car is this again? Kevin? 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 Yep. Kevin, okay, I'm good. <clears throat> Kevin, and I talked to you yesterday, Kevin, and we're getting close. Uh, I'm not painting this, but Ed is, and we've got your, uh, uh, Kevin had put the car all together, had it, I mean, a rolling chassis, had his brake lines run, had everything done, and everything mocked up, and sent it to us to go ahead and finish. We're going to paint it for him, we're going to wire it where he had the motor in, it's a new motor, so it's never been broke in, we're going to paint the motor and, and transmission, break it in. Um, so your frame is totally, we blew it apart today, it looked like a car this morning, now it looks like uh, it's just a frame in the back of my pickup truck and we're going to take it to the sandblaster, we don't do that in house and we're going to have it sandblasted today and, and uh, have it going tomorrow. Kevin's car is on the verge of being painted, so we'll follow this one through, it's a turnkey and probably in the next couple weeks we should see this one finish up. I don't know, does anybody have any questions out there? I know most everybody watches this uh, 
as a recording after it comes up live. But uh, just FYI, if you do want to be part of our live show, while you're watching it live now, there's a little uh, button on the bottom that says follow. Uh, that button will go away once it's uploaded onto the web page, onto the uh, Facebook page. And um, what happens when you push follow, I don't know. On my phone, there, Facebook is always telling me something's going on. So it may give you a notification somewhere that we're going live and you can come and uh, be part of the show. And when I say be part of the show, if you have a question, um, Josh is there, he's looking at what's going on back there. I can easily answer the question for you. And we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, again, we've said this earlier. We're not, I'm not doing this for us. <laughs> Spirit Cars is not doesn't need to have home videos. We're, hopefully, what we're doing is something that's very uh, uh, educational for everybody. We're not going to get into the drama. We're not going to do uh, uh, reality TV. We're just going to try to stay product uh, focused. Um, Customer cars that are coming together, it's just fun to watch them happen. People like to see that, especially the, the customers. Um, and uh, I wouldn't even take it farther. Their, their family, not man, it could be, be home videos for family. If this is your car, um, if you can figure out how to put it onto your site, go for it onto your Facebook. So, anyway, this is for today. But a lot of information without a lot of visuals, but There's a lot of forgiveness when it comes to wet sanding and buffing. So even if you don't have a great paint job, if you have enough clear on it, if your base color is, is on there good, it's not all streaked and, and just different colors, you can always wet sand your clear and buff and get a pretty nice paint job. But like we talked about the last couple times, it's not the final product that really counts in the long run. It's what's underneath it. What did you do to get to, to where it's at? Is it going to last? These, these products should last for years and years and years and years. The technology today is much better than it ever was. Um, so we're going to do some coffee break contemplations. A friend of mine, Hot Rod Man Ernie, wrote these couple books. It's his kind of thoughts. So I just read them. It's not a proverb, but uh, it's thoughts by Ernie. Always keep an open mind to the possibility that a stranger may have more in common with us than, we first, than what first meets the eye. I'm going to read that one again. Always keep in mind to the possibility that a stranger may have more in common with us than what first meets the eye. Um, in the Hebrew language, there is no word, there is no concept for coincidence. Sometimes when you bump into somebody, there's a purpose for it. So we ought to be nice to everybody. We ought to see. We ought to just uh, develop friendships, develop relationships. And we are glad you're here with us and we have a relationship with you and we can call you friend. So we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure what tomorrow's program will be or what Fridays will be, but uh, you may see this one in color tomorrow.